Hello students. In the previous lecture, we studied about the executives. We differentiated between permanent and political executives. And like we mentioned earlier, now we are going to start with Prime Minister and the Council of Ministers. The Prime Minister of our country holds the maximum power in his hand. Prime Minister is the leader of the majority party or the coalition party that has received the maximum votes in the Lok Sabha. The Prime Minister is appointed by the President. Ours is a Prime Ministerial form of government that is most of the power or to be straight, all of the powers rest in the hands of the Prime Minister only. The Prime Minister is appointed by the President and after the appointment of the Prime Minister, the President and the Prime Minister both with consultation appoint ministers on different posts. Usually the ministers are from the party which has received the majority votes in the Lok Sabha. The choice of the Prime Minister here is of most significance because the, pri the President only approves of the advice of the Prime Minister. She cannot place anyone on any ministry by her wish. So the Prime Minister is the most important political institution in the country. But all the work is not done by Prime Minister alone. Prime Minister also gets to appoint a council of ministers which is there to assist him in taking decisions, good decisions for the nation. The council of ministers is a official institution which includes around 60 to 80 ministers which are appointed at different ministries or ranks. These ministers usually belong to the party which has achieved majority votes in the Lok Sabha. But in the case of coalition government, ministers from different parties also get the opportunity to be in the cabinet. The cabinet basically comprises of three different levels. The first is the cabinet ministry. Next is the Minister of State with independent charges and the last is Ministers of State for Assistance. The Cabinet Ministers are the most important leaders of the majority party. These leaders hold the most important ministries and basically it is the most significant body in which decisions are taken. The other two levels, they can give advice, they can propose, but the final decision is of the cabinet ministers only. The next level is ministers of state with independent charges. They get the opportunity to participate in the cabinet meeting when they are invited when they are asked for their suggestions and opinions. And the last final level are the ministers of state. This level is basically for assisting the ministers of state with independent charges and the cabinet ministry. Because most of the decisions in any nation and ours in particular are taken by mainly the cabinet ministers, the form of the government is also called cabinet form of government. Now, one very important thing that we have to remember here is that the ministers belonging to 
the council of ministers and basically the cabinet they hold a collective responsibility now what is collective responsibility is the question that pops up here collective responsibility basically means that within the discussion room no matter who criticizes the policies or who appreciates the policy or whatever discussion is happening as long as the cabinet is sitting indoors and deciding for any change that they are going to make but outside in public the ministers of the cabinet cannot criticize the actions of the government one very important thing here is why is it done if you have not given your approval for any decision of the government then why should you agree for it in public the reason behind this collective responsibility is that if the government on which the people have put their faith the people is depended on and the decisions that the government is taking are not even accepted by the members of the government only then how can the people accept or rely on the decision so the decision declared by the cabinet in the public is accepted and promoted by all the cabinet members they will never criticize it because the backbone and any kind of weakness will lose their popular support so in this way we will find that the prime minister with the help of the council of minister controls and organizes all the work of the government the prime minister basically functions all the powers although the work of the prime minister is not very clearly and very elaborately mentioned in our constitution but still the prime minister holds the power of supervision the power of chairing the meeting of the cabinets the prime minister distributes the work and if he finds any problem in any particular department then he can redistribute the work as well the prime minister is the leader of the majority party in the lok sabha so the decisions taken by the prime minister are the decisions of the government but there is an exception in case of present india that the leading party is indian national congress at present in the year 2000 12 but the leader of the party is not the prime minister the leader of the party is sonia gandhi ji but instead she stepped aside and she allowed mr manmohan singh to become the prime minister of the country this is then again the decision of the leader of the majority party only if they are willing to take the position or not now in earlier periods we usually found that we when whenever we have to study about the prime ministers of our country we usually go back to the early periods of our independence and the first name that comes up in our mind is pandit jawaharlal nehru ji's name these leaders they held a very important position in their times because at that time the congress party they won with clear majorities and they were the irrevocable absolute undisputable leaders of the party now their position at that time became very significant but slowly and gradually as indian national congress started getting unpopular or less popular amongst the people it started getting lesser and lesser popular support as a result of which although the government was also government was formed by the congress but it did, could not achieve an absolute majority vote instead a coalition government was formed for the popular support so slowly and gradually
gradually as the position of the international congress decreased the position of the prime minister also was somehow weakened in earlier periods if we uh, take the example of indira gandhi ji the decisions that she took in her time were somehow based on the individual thinking or individual decisions but at present if manmohan singh ji has to take any decision he'll have to take and gain the support of the coalition parties also with whom they have made the collaboration so the position of the prime minister has become comparatively weaker in some areas but still the prime minister is the person who holds the maximum power in his hand and who executes this power with the help of the council of ministers the next important position is in words the most important position given in our constitution the highest authority of the nation that is the president as you all know that after the british has left our country the system of government that our leaders accepted was the british system of government only and in britain the most important position was held by the queen and the queen was the signature was the seal under whose permission all the work was done so the same system was adopted by our leaders as well we have the position of the president which if we look in the constitution uh, has all the powers to do anything uh, for the country and it can take any kind of decision but these powers are only in the papers the president cannot actually exercise these powers all the laws and all the major policy decisions that are taken in our country they are taken by the parliament they are taken by the government they are taken by the popular voting the president basically only signs and seals the document after it has come from all the steps of approval so like the queen of britain who is just the nominal head of the nation the president of india also acts as the nominal head of the nations the president of our country is elected by a body which is called the electoral college this election is not a direct election that is for the election of the president of our country public's opinion is not asked instead it is indirectly elected so the president although in the constitution can do everything in the country but the activities which the government do only take place in the name of the president in reality in actual condition the powers are in the hand of the leader of the majority party that is the prime minister and the council of minister which works under the supervision of the prime minister but to jot down the main activities that the president can do are so these are the functions of the president amongst these functions to go one by one all major appointments are done by the president only but this again is the job that the president only sanctions if he has to appoint the prime minister of the nation the majority party leader will be appointed as the prime minister so the work of the president here is just to approve it 
until unless the government formed is a coalition government and they cannot come to any decision of the person who will become the prime minister of the coalition government in that case the president can intervene and can appoint the person he feels can or does hold the highest support in the government but later on the person will have to prove his majority in the lok sabha the treaties with foreign countries are also done and sanctioned by the president although the meetings and the consultation and the details of the dealings with the international market are done by the area experts only the third point is the president sanctions the laws passed by the government of course the president does sanction the laws passed by the parliament and once a law or to say a bill has been approved with majority by the parliament the president can only send it back for reconsideration and if even after that it comes back without any change the president will have to sign the bill to make it a law the next point is the president can declare war with any nation this again is done with consultation of the related ministries and officers only the president holds the position of the supreme commander of the defense forces also which is something that we all know and in case of financial or war cases the president can declare emergency in the nation as well so the president of our country has different functions to perform but if we compare it with the president of usa then the condition will somehow become opposite the president of usa is directly appointed and because the people have elected that person to take decisions for them all the powers are actually in the hands of the president the president can exercise and change the laws that is why in usa it is a presidential form of government whereas ours is a prime ministerial form of government in the next lecture we will finish the last institution of the government it is the judiciary